I've spent plenty of time watching the endless parade of insane laws coming out of the California legislature in Sacramento this year and prior. You've all probably seen the memes of trench coat clad men standing on dark street corners luring you over to come check out their pockets full of black market plastic drinking straws because those are now illegal for restaurants to serve without specific customer requests. And if you do get your hands on some of those sweet straws, don't you dare transport them in a plastic shopping bag. Because those are illegal too, unless of course you're prepared to cover the 10 cent per bag fee to atone for your environmental irresponsibility. One activist quoted in this story praises California's effort to stand up to big plastic. I didn't realize big plastic was such a threat, but I'm less concerned about it than I am about even bigger government, which is apparently the only viable force to fight it. And don't even think about getting too critical of that big government. A bill set to reach the governor's desk will appoint the state of California responsible for declaring what is fake news and what isn't. It seems the only freedom you can count on in California is the freedom to take a shit and shoot up on the streets of San Francisco. Not only will those things be forever legal, but you'll actually get subsidized to do it, perhaps California's most viable career path these days. The odd thing about California's rampant progressivism is it always has to be state-imposed. If all of these things are so obvious progress, why aren't more people voluntarily choosing them? If the progress is so good, why does the state have to force you into it? And there's no such thing as good enough. There is no stopping the progress train. There is always more progress to impose upon you. And now there's yet another bill poised to become law in California that will make sure the progress happens, whether you like it or not, this time in the corporate boardroom. That's right, California is on the verge of mandating that women serve on company boards. The bill is through both houses of the legislature and headed for the governor's desk. California would be the first state to make such a move. The law would require public companies based in California to have at least one woman on their boards. In later years, the law will require at least two women if the company board has five directors and at least three women if the company board has six directors. Non-complying companies will face fines of hundreds of thousands of dollars for their violations. Says the bill's author, quote, one fourth of California's publicly traded companies still do not have a single woman on their board, despite numerous independent studies that show companies with women on their board are more profitable and productive. The time has come for California to bring gender equity to our corporate boards. Now, I don't know if those claims are true, that a quarter of California's companies don't have a woman on their board, and that companies who do have women on their boards are more profitable and productive, but let's say those things are true. Let's grant them. In that scenario, what would explain the description discrepancy. It could either be, as this lawmaker apparently wants us to believe, that these companies hate women more than they like money. After all, they could be making more money if they just stopped hating women so much. Or it could be, and I think much more plausibly, that there is simply a lower supply of qualified and willing women to fill these roles. It is not that these companies are discriminating. It's that this particular life path is one women less frequently choose. And this is commonly observed. The academic fields and the long work hours necessary to climb the corporate leadership ladder are just less frequently chosen by women. And if you think I'm sexist for saying that, fine. Don't take my word for it. Take Progressive Slate's word for it, reporting on findings from the Harvard Business Review. Says the study, quote, men and women have different preferences when it comes to achieving high-level positions in the workplace. More specifically, the life goals and outcomes that men and women associate with professional advancement are different. Women in one of the reference studies were asked to prioritize life goals and more frequently chose things that had less to do with power and more to do with other life priorities. And that freedom to choose choose should be the most important consideration here. If you want to work really hard and get your way up to a corporate board position, great, go for it. If you'd rather not have the stressful lifestyle and you want to raise a family instead, great, 
do that. The point is, it should be up to you to choose your life's path, not the state of California's. And the reality is, the state saying women must serve is just as heavy-handed as the state saying women can't serve. And think about what this means for women who do choose to serve in that capacity, women who do aspire to corporate leadership. Now, if you're a woman who does get a seat on the board of directors at a California company, you get to wonder, did I legitimately earn this seat? Or am I just here as a state of California mandated diversity hire? You want to talk about degrading women? Reduce their qualifications and experience to simply their gender. And that's exactly what the state of California is doing. And beyond just the individual, think of the effect on California businesses. The state is now mandating against meritocracy, against choosing the best, most qualified person for the job. And I get it, states have an interest in regulating corporate abuse. But what's abusive about a business and its shareholders deciding for themselves who ought to run the company? That strikes me as a core business freedom we ought to protect. It may not be this law singular, but the more California erodes fundamental business freedom, the less likely business will want to operate there. It's not a difficult calculation. If you tell me I'm not free to run my business how I like in your state, I guess I'll find another state where I am. But there is one other option, just one other way for California companies who don't want to comply with this ridiculous regulation, but maybe still want to avoid the moving costs. Sure, if this bill becomes law, you got to have at least one woman on your board. But that all depends on what the law's definition of woman is, especially in such a forward-thinking state like California. Check the bill's text, and yes, for the purposes of this law, Female means an individual who self-identifies her gender as a woman without regard to the individual's designated sex at birth. And as far as I read this bill, you don't even need any documentation to prove it. You don't even need to make that extra trip down to the DMV to get your driver's license changed. So if I ran a California company and I got fined under this law, I'd say, no, 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 you're mistaken. Bob over there identifies as a chick. And it's legit. We only pay her 77 cents on the dollar. You can check the books. And if the state gave me any trouble for this, I'd raise a huge PR stink and call them all transphobes for denying Bob's identity. Outdone by their own progressive bullshit. What an amazing thing to watch. Just like an illegal smuggling plastic straws across the border, I have no idea what the state would actually do to control that. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.